here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to talk to you about the application of binders after a pluminal wall reconstruction. And I'm glad to talk to you about this because it's applied postoperative biomechanics. In the upper row, you can see an incisional hernia with the muscular and the fat layer of the abdominal wall and the hernia opening. And here you see the repair of the hernia in the middle panel. The repair is done with a mesh in an underlay reconstruction. And in order to reinforce this, you put on an abdominal binder as you can see here in a male and a female configuration. We have been using biomechanics, um, applying it to the grip concept to put the patient in a database called Stronghold as part of the hernia made registry. And the grip concept is based on um, an analysis similar like you test airplane wings. And here you see Matthias Vollmer, engineer, you built the bench test. And in the bench test, we deliver impacts. And when you put on an abdominal binder, you reduce the peak of the impacts from 200 down to 50 or even less. And so when the destructive element is coughing or sharp bending, then the restricting element is a binder. So what can we say about the use of a binder? First of all, you have to look at the bench test. And as you look at the bench test, you see the delivery of the peaks. And here you see the effect on the machine. This is a hernia, extract, hernia reconstruction on a pig's belly. And this mesh moves back and forward. And here you can see the motion. It's in a net effect, several millimeters with each impact. And if you reduce the peak, then you reduce the motion from several millimeters to one millimeter. And so the effect on the tissue when you do this is here you have a piece of tissue, it's nerve fibers, collagen fibers, cells, fibroblasts, and capillaries. So when the stretching is too large due to the high impact, then you have pain due to the stretching of the nerve fiber. You have elongation and rupture of the collagen fibers, and you have elongation and rupture of the capillaries. Here you can see this effect, and it's already after an elongation of about 50 micrometer. And you saw that previously we had a motion of several millimeters. So this is the basic background on the application of binders after reconstructing the abdominal wall. If you want to know more about the grip concept, you can always look at the basic publication in Frontiers of Surgery. It's back in 2018. Or you can look at a month, monthly updated web blog herniatoday.com, or you can give me a call. You will see the phone number later on. Some people of the area where the um, symposium happens have already done this. So I'm looking forward to an intensified communication. Let's go to what is known about the motion of the abdominal wall. We did computer tomography with Valsalva maneuver, and we saw quite a shift and quite a stretching of the abdominal wall with a hernia opening. So if you look at it, it's several centimeters with one Valsalva maneuver. And um, this is even larger than the effect we saw on the bench test. The bench test showed an effect of several millimeters. And here we do have an effect 
of up to three and a half centimeters. So during the last 50 years, there are about 21 publications and there is increasing interest, but there is still very little published on the topic. And this is a survey done by a German fellow, Parsch, from 44 hospitals, and they did 16 recommendations on it. Almost half of them recommended to use it all the time. You use it day and night. And one third recommended not to use it at all. And the reminder of about 25%, they split between use it during physical stress. But if you do not know when you have physical stress, use it during the day. And the recommendations vary, use it for one week or use it up to three months. So this is what is currently in use, at least in this survey. And this is what is published in the literature in a recent review from the Danish group around Biscard in 2014. And it's all kinds of recommendations, open major abdominal surgery, midline laparotomy, including hernia repair, major upper abdominal surgery, open solecystectomy, abdominoplasty, major abdominal surgery, and laparoscopic hernia repair. So some of them were randomized control studies, others were prospective or retrospective observational studies. And they use different type of binders, and they used the binder for the first two, first few days, or they used the binder intermittently or continuously or up to six weeks. And they looked at pain, physical function, pulmonary function, aroma formation, and perceived distress. And in a maximum of 25%, pain was reduced. Physical function was reduced in one out of eight. Pulmonary function was reduced in one out of eight. Seroma formation was decreased in one out of eight and perceived distress was again in 25%. So there is very little impact to be observed. Parsh published last year that an abdominal binder has no side effect. If you look at his two observational groups, the second group had more open incisional hernia repair and the first group had more laparoscopic hernia repair. And those two groups were different in age. The laparoscopic group was larger and it used the binder less frequent for a shorter period of time, six versus eight weeks on the average. They observed hernia relapse after one year in both groups in about 10%. Seroma formation was more frequent after open hernia repair. Pulmonary infection was more frequent after hernia repair. But none of these effects were significant. So one can say in the end there was no harm and there was no gain in this observational study. So <clears throat> if you look at the theory and if you look at the data, you will find that the theory, the increase in abdominal pressure, we limit this by using a binder, cannot be measured. So if we cannot measure the effect, it's very hard to tailor the method to the right patient. So what we would need to have a binder with a measurement device, but we do not have this. So since we have a biomechanically based approach, we do use a binder and we put our patient in this stronghold database as part of hernia made. And after one year, we observed almost 100 patients in four different hospitals. The full database of Stronghold 
has 10 different hospitals, but I have only access to four hospitals. Some of them I'm operating in. And Gesundbrunnen, Heilbronn, this is my wife, Regine, operating in. So you see there is quite a rapid decrease in the post-operative pain. And after one year, we have no recurrence and we have no prescriptions. We use it for at least one to two weeks, but we give it to the patients to use the binder for an another three months during the healing period. And during that healing period, they should do physical exercise as aqua jogging immersed into water up to the chest. So um, they should use the binder when they are up and about on the open air. So um, they have no um, sudden increase in abdominal pressure and they should do physical exercise doing aqua jogging. During that period of time, they do not wear the binder and they do not wear the binder during bed rest. So the results we believe are quite good, but we do not have a solid scientific base to stand on. Thank you very much. This is my private contact. If you want to contact me or if you want to have a contact for patients in the Heidelberg Hospital, you can contact them there. Thank you very much for your attention.